So today we shall going to discuss about the renin angiotensin system and the drugs modifying it in brief. I am Dr. Abhishek Khosh, Assistant Professor of Pharmacology, College of Medicine, and JNM Hospital, Kollani. So you know from the physiology knowledge that renin is secreted from the juxtacribular cell and what are the factors affecting renin release which you should remember. So you know that it, uh, when there is an increased BP, body tries to decrease renin release and then uh, vice versa is true, when there is decreased fluid volume in our uh, system, decreased blood pressure, then body tries to conserve the fluid and as a result uh, body tries to increase the renin release. So renin is increased by decreased arterial blood pressure, decreased pressure in the glomerular vessel, there, if there is increased loss of sodium and water and there, if there is increased sympathetic activity. So these are the factors which increase the renin release and opposites are true also when there is sodium water retention in the body like in cases of congestive heart failure then there is decrease in the renin release. Uh, increased blood pressure also tends to decrease in renin release that is normal physiology and activation of the AT1 receptor that is the receptor for the angiotensin 2. So activation of the AT1 receptor also cause decreased renin release this is a short loop negative feedback mechanism. So this is what is this so we know that renin actually increases the synthesis of the angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 then angiotensin 1 is converted to angiotensin 2 which acts on the AT1 receptor and also there is some AT2 receptor is also responsible but AT1 receptor is the major receptor for the angiotensin 2. Uh, so this is also a feedback mechanism is going on renin increase the angiotensin 2 level but angiotensin 2 by acting on the AT1 re receptor limits the further renin release. So that is a negative feedback mechanism which is present in the normal physiological system. So renin synthesized stored and released by the exocytosis into renal artery circulation by the juxtaglomerular cell and actually there is also a chemical called prorenin these are also stored in the JG cells. Prorenin is converted to renin by the proteolytic enzymes proconvertase 1 or cathepsin B and concentration of prorenin is about 10 times higher than the renin in the circulating blood. And renin converts the angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 which is then converted to angiotensin 2 by that enzyme that is called angiotensin converting enzyme and angiotensin 2 is the active form of the enzyme. So what, how we can control the renin secretion there is a macular tensor pathway there is interrenal baroreceptor pathway and beta receptor pathway. So let us discuss one by one. So macular tensor pathway is the macular tensor what is that it is a specialized columnar epithelial cells in the thick ascending limb of the nephron. And it lies between the afferent and efferent arterioles adjacent to the juxtaglomerular apparatus. So reabsorption of the sodium chloride occurs by the macular tensor cells and increase in the sodium chloride flux causes inhibition of the renin release while decrease causes the increased renin release. So what does that mean? So once again if there is a increased sodium and water chloride or water delivery to the macular tensor cell then there is inhibition of the renin release. While if there is a decreased sodium chloride or water reabsorption and there is decreased uh, macular tensor senses there is a decreased delivery of the sodium chloride to the macular tensor then renin release is increased. So now let us discuss the diuretic effect. Diuretic what does that mean? Diuretic means there is increased sodium water loss. So in macular tensor there is decreased delivery of the sodium and water. So, so renin secretion is increased by diuretic whereas when there is a uh, no diuresis in the system there is uh, sodium and water are normally reabsorbed then if suppose per patient is taking in excess salt body and water uh, sodium and water are more, more reabsorbed then renin release is decreased okay. So this is a, once again a very good control mechanism if sodium and water are more reabsorbed then renin release is decreased if sodium and water are less reabsorbed that means more are excreted then renin release is increased. In ATP, adenosine and prostaglandin also modulate this pathway. So this is the macular tensor control of the renin release. So you know macular tensor, so this is the sodium chloride uh, potassium channel are present and also prostaglandin increases the renin release. How? Because prostaglandin uh, increases the uh, renin release from the macular tensor to the external cell. So when there is an increased COX2 uh, uh, production activity then in the kidney then prostaglandin tend to increase the renin release and ATP also tend to increase renin, inhibit the renin release by P2Y acting on the P2Y receptor pathway. Look here from, from the macular tensor ATP is released which act on the P2Y receptor in the JG cells which tend to inhibit the renin release whereas adenosine tend to also increase, inhibit the renin release. 
and angiotensin 2 as I mentioned that act, it acts on the 81 receptor to inhibit the renin release this is a short loop negative feedback. So look here from this uh, slide adenosine ATP that is the act by acting on the P2Y receptor and angiotensin 2 acting on the 81 receptor there is a they decrease renin release whereas norepinephrine uh, or epinephrine by acting on the beta 1 receptor in the JG cell they tend to increase the release. So beta, remember beta receptor stimulation by not epinephrine epinephrine they tend to increase the release. Prostaglandin tend to increase the renin release but ATP adenosine and angiotensin 2 they tend to decrease the release. So in macular regulation is mainly done by the concentration of the chloride concentration rather than the sodium concentration. So if chloride concentration sensed uh, the less the chloride delivery to the macular densa they, if they that is sensed uh, low then there is increased renin release whereas chloride delivery if, uh, to the macular densa if it is more then there is decreased renin release. So concentration of the sodium in the tubular lumen is usually higher than required for the saturating the sim water. So changes in the level of the sodium do not have much effect on the macular densa. Next intrarenal blood receptor pathway. So it, if there is an increase in the blood pressure or renal perfusion pressure in the preglomerular vessel that inhibit the renin release and vice versa. It may be mediated by stress receptor in the arterial walls and or by the prostatin synthesis. So just like macular densa pathway when uh, increased chloride delivery uh, actually tend to decrease renin release here also increased pressure in the perfusion pressure in the uh, glomerular vessel they tend to inhibit the renin release and if there is decrease in the renal perfusion pressure or decreased uh, glomerular uh, pressure in the glomerular vessel then there is increased renin release and also there is a role of the prostaglandin so prostaglandin tend to increase the renin release uh, because as sensed by the stress receptor and uh, another mechanism is beta receptor pathway so already discussed and you know from the uh, your autonomic nervous system class that beta 1 receptor present in the JG cells and renin uh, produced by the JG cells that that, that it tend to increase the uh, so beta receptor stimulation actually tend to increase the renin release on sympathetic activity so, so sympathetic activation that's why there is a increased renin release due to this beta 1 receptor stimulation so that is a, this mechanism by which there is renin secretion is regulated by different pathway the increased renin secretion enhances formation of the angiotensin 2 this is the ultimate uh, molecule which uh, uh, regulates all the activities of this RAS pathway. Angiotensin 2 is responsible for short loop negative feedback and other, the other factors in negative feedback there is activation of the high pressure bioreceptor thereby reducing the renal sympathetic tone and this is called long loop negative feedback. There is increased pressure in the preglomerular vessel and there is reduction of the sodium chloride reabsorption from the proximal tubule that is another uh, uh, mechanism of the pressure natriuresis thereby reducing the delivery of the sodium chloride to the macular densa which reduces renin release. So we have discussed this. So if increased delivery of the sodium chloride tend to reduce the renin release and decrease the delivery of the sodium chloride to the macular densa tend to increase the renin release and this is the long loop negative feedback. And this is the physiological factors modifying the renin release is systemic blood pressure, dietary salt intake and some pharmacological agents, agents should, should remember that we have discussed that prostaglandin tend to increase renin release. So N site they tend to decrease the renin release because N site we know that it decreases the prostaglandin production. Loop diuretics we have discussed the loop diuretics actually decrease the blood pressure and increase the sodium chloride reabsorption. So there is increased renin release. So loop diuretics means there is more salt and water are excreted. So less salt and water are sensed by the uh, macular densa because of less reabsorption so that's why there is increased renin release due to loop diuretics. AC inhibitors and ARB renin inhibitors these are the actually drugs which modify this RAS mechanism system. So AC inhibitor means angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor they inhibit the production of angiotensin 2 from angiotensin 1 so angiotensin 2 activities are less uh, reduced. A ARB means angiotensin receptor blocker so directly they are blocking the angiotensin receptors so inhibit the angiotensin active effect and any inhibitor they are acting more proximally so ultimately angiotensin 1 2 production all are reduced and there is some centrally acting sympathetic agents and beta blockers decrease the renin secretion by reducing the beta receptor activation so ace that is angiotensin converting enzyme so it is a glycoprotein it is identical to kininase 2 that inactivates the body kinin and other potent vasodilator peptides so angiotensin converting enzyme uh, inhibitor they also inhibit the badikinin metabolism so you have to remember this because they, there is a structural similarity, similarity to, to kinase, kininase 2 enzyme and as badikinin metabolism is inhibited by the SE inhibitor so there is more 
uh, circulating bradykinin which tend to produce vasodilation mode but also there is a risk of the angioedema and ace is present in the vascular endothelium which is responsible for the rapid conversion of the angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 and ace2 is present in the human body that is a carboxypeptidase it cleaves one amino acid residue from the angiotensin 1 to convert it to ang129 or uh, from angiotensin 2 to ang127 so these are the actually some additional metabolites actually uh, when major pathway is blocked then these additional me uh, metabolites are the pro are produced and ang127 binds to the mass receptor and elicits vasodilator response and non proliferative response whereas main angiotensin 2 are actually vasoconstrictor and ace2 has 400 fold greater activity for the angiotensin 2 than angiotensin 1 this is a, not a major uh, enzyme ace is the major enzyme ace2 is not inhibited by the standard ace inhibitor okay and physiological significance is uncertain so we should not discuss it much now let's come back to the angiotensinogen angiotensinogen is the precursor molecule of the angiotensin 2 angiotensinogen is formed in the liver and major site for conversion of the angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 is lung so renin actually converts angiotensin 2 to angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 and angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 this is converted by ace and lungs have a large number of the capillaries and ace is present in the lung capillaries in the endothelial cells and other sites are also responsible for production of this angiotensin 1 to 2 uh, like especially kidney blood, blood vessels and angiotensinogens are uh, diverse group of enzymes like aminopeptidase, endopeptidase, carboxypeptidase that degrade and inactivate the angiotensin. There are some local RAS also activated, uh, uh, also proposed and local RAS are present in the in, uh, brain, pituitary, blood vessel, heart, kidney and adrenal glands and actually uh, these role they are they play an important role in the hypertrophy inflammation remodeling process and also hypoprosis process and there is binding of the renin or proranin to proranin receptor are present in this uh, cell surface and so local RAS inhibition is also important uh, along with those main RAS when there is a uh, pathophysiological conditions like hypertension heart failure are present then we tend to inhibit this RAS activity and then we have to aim to reduce this local RAS pathway also. Now angiotensin receptors are two types AT1 and AT2. AT1 is the major subtype AT2 has some uh, have some significance when AT1 receptor is blocked. The most effects of angiotensin 2 are mediated by AT1 receptor. So remember from angiotensinogen angiotensin 1 then angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 and angiotensin 2 has two receptors AT1 is the major receptor AT2 is less important receptor but it is activated when AT1 receptor is blocked. So role of AT2 receptor are not well defined and may counterbalance many effects of the AT1 activation. So it is proposed that AT1 receptor activation actually tend to produce the vasoconstriction and other effects of angiotensin 2 which ultimately tries to conserve the plasma volume also maintains the vessel tone more towards the vasoconstriction but whereas AT2 receptor mainly causes vasodilation. So what are the functions of RAS in the angiotensin system? So effects of the angiotensin 2 on CVS include rapid pressure response which increase the blood pressure by increasing the peripheral resistance by causing vasoconstriction. Major pathway uh, molecule responsible is angiotensin 2 by acting on the AT1 receptor. Also there is a slow pressure response. It is done by decreasing the renal excretion and production of the endothelin 1. It is a vasodilator molecule. and so endothelin 1 is a vasodilator so if, if there is decreased endothelin production then that can contribute to the increasing the blood pressure and also there is a vascular and cardiac hypertrophy and remodeling so what is the rapid pressure response once again so how that means how actually angiotensin 2 increase the blood pressure or similarly if question comes how a c inhibitor and arb cause a decrease in the blood pressure you have to answer this rapid pressure response you provide the rapid pressure response by which examiner can understand how you are explaining the that angiotensin 2 how it causes the hypertension on increasing the blood pressure so it will receptor located in the vascular small muscle cell and angiotensin 2 activates the receptor there is a constriction on the precapillary arterioles and also to a lesser extent the postcapillary venules and it acts by the it is uh, actually g protein coupled receptor it acts by the GQ, phospholipase C, inosylol triphosphate, calcium pathway. There is vasoconstriction, it is maximum in the kidney, and also there is some vasoconstriction in the splenic circulation also. And it is a weak vasoconstriction in the brain, lung, and skeletal muscle. 
Apart from this direct vasoconstrictor action, also angiotensin 2 tend to increase the activity of the norepinephrine. Enhancement of the peripheral norepinephrine neurotransmission by inhibiting the reuptake of the norepinephrine into the raft terminals. There is enhancing vascular response to norepinephrine that means sensitivity to the norepinephrine is increased by angiotensin 2. There is increased inhibition of the reuptake of the norepinephrine into the nerve terminals. There is high concentration of the angiotensin 2 actually stimulate the ganglion cells directly. And also it has been uh, proposed that actually angiotensin 2 activation actually tend to increase the adrenaline production from the norepinephrine in the, in, in the adrenal medulla. Also there is synergistic effect here that is increasing the central sympathetic outflow and there is attenuation of the receptor mediated reduction in the sympathetic discharge from the brain. And brain contains all components of rest and brain is affected by both circulating angiotensin 2 by increasing the central sympathetic tone also there is increased thrust there is that is called dyspogenic effect and there is the release of the catecholamines from the adrenal medulla is also increased because angiotensin 2 depolarizes the chromaffin cells of adrenal medulla and cause release of the adrenaline so these are the net effect of the multiple effects of the angiotensin 2 which tend to cause increase in the blood pressure there is a direct vasoconstrictor action that that's why there is a increased peripheral resistance increase in the blood pressure also it increases the sensitivity of the norepinephrine in the vascular smooth muscle so there is more vasoconstriction and also there is decreased norepinephrine reuptake there is increased adrenal release adrenal release from the adrenal medulla and also there is increased sympathetic outflow and also there is increased thirst which tend to uh, the patient to uh, take more water and there, there thus there is more fluid volume present in the body that's also contributing the increase in the blood pressure so if we can block all this by blocking the angiotensin 2 effect how we can block it by either by reducing the production of the angiotensin 2 by giving SE inhibitor which inhibit the angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 production or by directly blocking the angiotensin 2 receptor that is the AT1 receptor by giving the ARB okay and there is another slow pressure response it is uh, produced in the level of the kidney angiotensin 2 reduces the urinary excretion of the sodium and water there is increased excretion of this potassium it stimulates the sodium hydrogen exchange in the exchanger in the proximal tubule due to which sodium chloride and bicarbonate reabsorption increases. Also it increases the expression of the sodium glucose symporter in the proximal tubule. They directly stimulate the sodium potassium prochloride symporter in the thick ascending limb. You know that the, if you had read, read the diuretic, sodium potassium chloride, these are actually, uh, so these two chloride, this channel is actually blocked by the di loop diuretics like furosemide, torsemide, etc. So opposite effect is done by angiotensin 2 they directly stimulate the sodium chloride potassium to chloride symporter in the ascending limb so there is more sodium potassium chloride reabsorption and uh, along with that there is also water is also conserved so ultimately angiotensin 2 tries to conserve the sodium potassium chloride as well as water and there is increased excretion of the uh, potassium uh, if there is more active uh, excretion of the potassium by the um, angiotensin 2 whereas AC inhibitor ARB has opposite effect they tend to conserve the potassium but extract the sodium chloride and water okay angiotensin 2 also stimulate the zona glomerulosa to add of adrenal cortex to increase the synthesis and excretion of the aldosterone so aldosterone is the major pathway by which there is a slow pressure response is carried out so it increases the production of the aldosterone from the adrenal cortex and it also augments its response to other stimuli like ACTH and potassium Aldosterone acts on the distal and collective tubules to cause retention of the sodium and excretion of the potassium and high H plus. It's there is stimulation of the aldosterone secretion depends on this plasma concentration of the sodium and water, potassium. So when there is a more sodium concentration, then aldosterone production is reduced. There is no uh, and when there is a less sodium and then aldosterone production is increased okay and reverse is also true when there is more potassium then aldosterone production is less when there is less potassium aldosterone production is more because aldosterone tend to conserve the or uh, pot, uh, sorry aldosterone tends to conserve the sodium and excrete the potassium so when there is a low sodium concentration aldosterone concentration is increased and when there is more potassium concentration aldosterone concentration uh, production is increased but re reverse is true when there is more sodium and less potassium then aldosterone production is decreased okay then release of the aldosterone is enhanced in cases of the hyponatremia and hyperkalemia and vice versa so you have to remember this angiotensin 2 but not only it produ uh, produces more uh, adrenaline 
release from the adrenal medulla also from the adrenal cortex it increases the adrenal, uh, adrenal cell secretion production depending on the fluid volume as well as sodium and potassium status so it's in aldosterone production is enhanced in hyponatremia and hyperkalemia okay what is the effect on the glomerular filtrate ultimately there is a constriction of the efferent arteriolus reduces intracranular pressure and tends to reduce the gfr and constriction of efferent arteriolus increases the intracranular pressure and tends to increase the gfr normally gfr is slightly reduced by the angiotensin 2 and another effect is that it's carried out by the mass receptor vascular and cardiac hypertrophy and remodeling so cells involved are vascular smooth muscle cell cardiac muscle cell and fibroblast it stimulates the migration proliferation and hypertrophy of the vascular smooth muscle cell there is increased extracellular matrix production by the vascular smooth muscle cell it causes hypertrophy of the cardiac myocytes and it also increases the extracellular matrix production by the cardiac fibroblast what is the effect of the heart it increases the cardiac contractility directly by opening of the voltage gated pulse calcium channels in the cardiac myocyte it increases the heart rate indirectly by increasing the central sympathetic tone also by increasing the norepinephrine effect by, by which uh, actually norepinephrine reuptake is inhibited increase the adrenal release of the adrenal corticolamines uh, especially adrenaline facilitates the adrenergic neurotransmission by increasing the inhibiting the reuptake and also increasing the vascular responsiveness there is rapid rise in the blood pressure causes bioreceptor stimulation and it causes decrease in the central sympathetic tone and increase the vagal tone so this is the picture which will depict everything about the renin angiotensin aldosterone system so angiotensinogen is produced from the liver from by renin converts this to angiotensin 1 and renin production i have mentioned multiple factors which influences renin release decrease in the blood pressure cause increased renin release increase in blood pressure cause decreased renin release angiotensin 1 is converted to angiotensin 2 by ace which is produced mainly by the lung and angiotensin 2 have, two have multiple effects it increases sympathetic sympathy activity it increases the tubular sodium chloride reabsorption and also potassium excretion from adrenal cortex it increases the adrenal adrenal production from adrenal medulla it increases the adrenal release there is also arteriolar vasoconstriction increasing the blood pressure by acting on directly on the AT1 receptor it increases the thrust by acting on the ATH receptor and in also collecting duct it, there is a inhibition of the sodium water excretion so it increases the water absorption so ultimate effect is water and salt retention and thus it, it maintains the circulating volume and thus it tends to increase in the blood pressure so opposite effects will be obtained if we can block this angiotensin 2 effect either we can decrease the Angiotensin 2 receptor effect by directly by blocking the receptor that is a T1 receptor also by inhibiting the production of the angiotensin 2 by inhibiting the ACE okay and also by inhibiting the renin by giving the direct renin inhibitor but then also this all this production will all these effects of the angiotensin 2 as well as aldosterone will be blocked and then so which on which is which this can be applicable we have to we we are giving this ras inhibitor in the mainly in the treatment of the heart failure congestive heart failure as well as hypertension and in some cases also um, after macular infarction when there is a risk of heart failure due to cardiac remodeling then also it is given so rapid pressure response once again due to increasing the at1 effect in vasoconstriction is there and also there is more neuro norepinephrine effect as well as increased sympathetic outflow in heart also there is a increased release uh, central sympathetic tone is increased there is increased contract contractility this is the vasodilation to effects change in the peripheral resistance due to vasoconstriction as well as sympathetic discharge is increased adrenaline release is increased from the maternal medulla change in the renal functions mainly sodium reabsorption occurs and also there is increase in the aldosterone production and structural changes or remodeling occurs due to some increase in the growth factor increase in the afterload and vascular and cardiac hypertrophy and remodeling due to production of the extracellular matrix and that is also mediated by angiotensin 2 as well as aldosterone so in heart failure what happens in heart failure actually kidney senses that there is a decreased perfusion in the kidney so renin release is increased and renin release increased actually tend to cause this angiotensin 1 2 aldosterone production is more and aldosterone production actually tend to cause remodeling of the, of the heart due to this uh, also angiotensin 2 and aldosterone actually tend to cause this remodeling of the heart and actually that's actually contribute to the further decrease in the cardiac output so there is a vicious cycle is going on which we have to decrease uh, block by inhibiting the cardiac remodeling and that can be blocked by RAS inhibitor we can give angiotensin receptor blocker as well as by giving aldosterone receptor antagonist like spironolactone which will cause inhibition of this growth factor and cause inhibition of the cardiac hypertrophy and remodeling
so these are the drugs used in treatment of the heart failure and hypertension so angiotensin receptor i have discussed ac 81 82 82 has some opposite effect of 81 that can cause vasodilation so these are the inhibitors of the res ac inhibitor arb and direct renal inhibitors and if you remember that angiotensin 2 effect then you can easily write all the effects of the ac inhibitors and wh what are their uses okay so these are the example ac inhibitor they are captopril enalapril vendopril ranipril arb is allosartan valsartan telmisartan etc okay so ac inhibitor inhibit the conversion of angiotensin 1 to 2 and also there is the additional effect of inhibition of the bradykinin metabolism so there is a more vasodilation but that actually has some effect of the on the angioedema okay and captopril is the initial adverse uh, initial uh, AC inhibitor which we use and in, though we commonly use now enalapril and ramipril which are longer acting and captopril has uh, is shorter acting and what are the common adverse effect of AC inhibitor actually that can cause uh, sorry that can cause uh, dry cough which we have to counsel the patient if the, it is not responding to uh, if, if that, that if that is uh, more cumbersome and uh, more dif uh, uh, discomfortable for the patient then we can switch over to the arb and also a c inhibitor arb both should be avoided in the bilateral renal artery stenosis as well as pregnancy and also we have to risk about uh, there is a risk of hyperkalemia so we should check the potassium also okay but what are the major uses of ac inhibitor these are the essential hypertension left ventral systolic dysfunction acute mi high risk patient of the cardiovascular disorder diabetes mellitus with renal failure has renal protective effect on the type 1 as well as type 2 diabetes mellitus and also scleroderma renal crisis these are, these are the effects uh, uses of the ac inhibitor but try to understand the what are, why ac inhibitor arb are used in um, diseases of the heart as well as kidney and ARB, they are they are competitively bind to H1 receptor. There is slow dissociation of H1 receptor, and ARB is actually induce uh, receptor internalization. That's why binding and blockade are often insurmountable. And if there is increased renal release and angiotensin two levels like AC inhibitors. There is a ilve sartan, losartan, lonesartan. So actually, AC as I mentioned, angiotensin two receptor by acting on the AT1 receptor, they increase the uh, by they inhibit the renal release by short loop negative feedback. So ARB actually tend to increase the release because this short loop negative feedback is blocked because AT1 receptor is not now not active. Uh, so as AT1 receptor is not active, so feedback inhibition is not given. That's why renal release is actually increased. But ultimately, that is not uh, going to have much effect because ultimately angiotensin 2 production uh, 2 activity is blocked. Okay. So they are the drugs: losartan, telmisartan, valsartan. Uses similar: essential hypertension, diabetic nephropathy. Losartan has additional use in stroke prophylaxis and valsartan is specially used in the heart failure. Okay, and direct inhibitor, inhibitor is aliskiden. Though it is not used uh, because have, uh, there is no additional advantage over AC inhibitor or ARB, rather it is more costly, but it can be used. Uh, but remember, we have to use one RAS blocker. Uh, we have to use just one RAS in a single patient. We cannot use AC inhibitor or uh, plus ARB. We cannot use ARB plus direct uh, inhibitor because there is more risk of the hyperkalemia if both uh, two groups of RAS blocker are added, uh, used simultaneously. So remember that, and it is used for aliskin also used for, used for treatment of the hypertension. Okay. So you should remember how AC inhibitor ARB acts and how, what is the net result of the angiotensin 2 and what is the effect of the inhibition of the angiotensin 2.